Oh no, that's not happening. Can't it just be simple for once? Welcome to the world of BeamNG Drive, an extremely diverse, in-depth driving simulator that breaks the boundaries of normal racing games. What you just saw is only a fraction of what is possible. Between great driving physics, detailed tuning, soft body crashing simulation, and a massive modding community, BeamNG is a near staple to PC gaming, for both the casual and the professional player. But what is BeamNG? What can you do? How does it work? Why is it so popular? Well, let's start with a little history lesson. Talk about where Beam and G came from.
Rigs of Rods, the Beam and G before Beam and G. Released on August 11th, 2005, Roar pushed the limits of computing with soft body physics and dynamic simulation. Planes, trains, cranes, tow trucks, monster trucks, with a very active modding community, Rigs of Rods could be whatever you wanted. It is so popular, in fact, that it is still updated to this day. It still has a relatively lively modding community. So why start with Rigs of Rods? Roar utilizes the same framework that Beam and G does. Beams and nodes. Everything is simulated in real time. Suspension, damage, frame flex, all rely on beams and nodes. We'll cover that more in depth later. Developers working on Rigs of Rods began working on Beam and G in 2011, releasing a teaser in 2012 featuring some clips of the D-Series, the pickup trucking game, driving over bumps and crashing into walls, all to showcase the improved soft body physics. Nope. This is recording in CryEngine, but the developers switched to Torque 3D due to CryEngine being too unstable, which is not too surprising, honestly. The game would be greenlighted on Steam on the 20th of February, and released in Early Access on the 29th of May, 2015. Reception was great. People loved it. People loved Rigs of Rods, and this was just a new, updated Rigs of Rods. The early versions of Beam and G didn't offer too much, just a few cars and a few maps. But what it did have showed potential. Now, almost eight years later, the developers took advantage of all that potential. Consistent free content updates and engine improvements did the game far beyond its original showcase. Much larger showroom of vehicles and revamps to the original launch cars, along with different locations from California to Italy. Constant improvements in suspension simulations, soundscapes, graphics, and the UI, and all of these updates for free. But that doesn't even scratch the surface. The modding community and the in-game repository vastly improved the game. Forums have even more mods, such as Maxi's Crown Vic, or this Dodge Coronet, which I absolutely love. You just have to pay the small price of watching new users necropost forums from eight years ago or so. I know it's real. As mentioned earlier, Beam and G works the same way Rigs of Rods did, using nodes and beams. Every node needs a beam, and every beam needs a node. Nodes act as a pivot point between beams. Using multiple beams will make a shape, and interconnecting nodes will brace the shape so it doesn't fall apart easily. As a visual representation, I'll use Polybridge, this neat little bridge building simulator. It uses the same principle, nodes, beams, roads, points, you get the idea. Connecting nodes together makes a simple shape, but with no bracing, it fails quickly. By connecting between different points, we strengthen the shape. Each beam can be edited with different stiffness, deformation, and strengths. Each beam has its own stress strain curve. Depending on how the beam is edited, it can flex and twist with a certain amount and return to its original shape. However, if a beam or a series of beams is pushed beyond its yield, it'll permanently deform. If enough force is applied to a beam, it may fail entirely and break, such as wheel hubs or bumper mounts. These rules apply to every component of a vehicle and are adjusted to better simulate the material that they represent, such as tires having a real friction coefficient and flex that makes them realistically suited for certain terrains. What makes this great is that changes in tuning to suspension are realistically simulated and not predetermined like normal racing games. Replacing normal springs and struts with coilovers will actively stiffen the suspension because the materials used in them are stiffer. Because of the stiffer suspension, the frame itself may flex more. In normal games, that may just be simulated, but in Beam and G, it's not just simulated, it's actually visually happening. In order to fix this, you may add a roll cage which will actively stiffen the frame. Not only that, but in the event of a crash, the roll cage will actually work in protecting the cab while the soft sheet metal body panels deform around it. All of these beams and nodes of varying materials and data work together to make a vehicle perform as they should, rather than having everything predetermined and cookie cutter. A 
I bring up mods a lot when talking about Beam, and it's because mods greatly expand what's possible in the game. The best part? You too can make your own mods. You don't need massive knowledge in JBeam or Blender to make them. All you need is automation. Automation is a car factory tycoon game that lets you design and sell cars to be mass produced. One complaint of automation is that there's no way to personally drive your creations. In 2018, Beam and G and Camshaft Software, the automation devs, released an update allowing users to port over the creations to Beam. They aren't perfect, lacking fully detailed J-Beam and a complete chassis, but it is possible to build off this model if you so choose. As what user Innocent Joker did with the Gavril Vertex. A totally original, I swear to god, not at all a replica of the 2008 Ford Focus. Small details are what make a game great, things that don't need to be done, but are nice fan service when added. In addition to making physics and handling akin to real life, there are tons of features that add to the immersion. I think that's what kids are calling it these days. I wrote this part of the script not long after the 026 and 027 update, both of which added tons of details for most cars and a handful of quality of life features, such as having to hold down on the starter key in order to start the car, or being able to equip cards with wine lock, allowing you to do massive burnouts. There was a small little hiccup when I wrote this script. Line Lock has actually been in the game for a little bit and I knew that, but it was cool so I wanted to add it anyways. Something that was added was bypass shots, and those are pretty cool too. Some vehicles will have interactable objects in the interior, such as the new Autobello Stambeco. You can engage the transfer case, lock the front rear lockers, and even air down the tires with an onboard compressor. Each vehicle can be tuned and customized however you see fit in the configuration menu. Every single part can be changed or removed, down to the bare chassis. The only detail missing in Beam is a driver, and I wouldn't hold your breath waiting for one to be added officially either. Given that the level of destruction that can be achieved would make Polly Wheels of Fury and Ryan look like a fucking Greek god, there is a crash test dummy mod to make up for it though. It even has a camera view tied to the head for a VR experience on a budget. I know I just mentioned the Gravel Vertex, but I'm doing it again. It deserves more screen time. Sure, it's not a vanilla car, but the level of detail and customization is wild. Look at this! It's a car! Stacked on top of another car! This one's got a cannon bolted to the roof! This one can fly! If you're competent. If you're picking up BMNG, this should be one of the first mods you try out. It is nuts. What? I think the early 2000s were cool. The early days of Beam weren't anything special, which isn't too surprising since the goal is to provide a more complex simulation and not to look pretty. It was a major improvement over the previous rigs of rods, but not much more than that. Sounds were generic, lighting was simple, and maps were somewhat detailed, but mostly bland. And that was okay, since the main functionality was all that mattered at the time. But as more updates rolled out, the devs would start to improve the graphics in the soundscape, including PBR and engine noises that would change depending on the parts selected and the damage that the exhaust sustained.
dynamic lighting, reflections, motion blur, drastically change the look of Beam. You don't need to hear it from me. Just take a look for yourself. It may not stand on its own with titans such as Forza or Gran Turismo, lacking ray tracing and some revolutionary weather systems, but Beam and G offers something that outdoes almost every other driving game on the market. To its real-time simulation, every car feels and performs like it should, making it a contender for one of the best sim driving games out there. But that doesn't mean you have to have some sort of crazy expensive setup that costs three times as much as your monthly rent. This game has enough options and assists to make playing with a controller more than enjoyable. You can even easily play the game with a keyboard and mouse for the cavemen that haven't upgraded to an OS with controller support. But seriously, support has been packaged in since Windows 7. There's no need for this. Beam and G is whatever you make it. Kick up rocks in a rally or lay rubber drag racing. Cruise around Belasco City or rampage through the canyons of Utah. There's even an unofficial multiplayer mod, Beam and P, so you can enjoy Beam with friends. Beam&G has a long future ahead, constantly improving and expanding, which is why fans like I are so invested in it. Way invested in it. If you haven't picked up Beam&G yet, even if you aren't a car guy or one for sim racing, do it. You won't be disappointed. While I have you all here, you may have noticed that I've not returned to my normal streaming schedule. 
This video took a while to come out. Simply put, I've been swamped with work. And because that pays my bills, that takes priority. That being said, I won't be streaming until further notice. Same with the oddball videos such as Fallout and the obvious stream highlights. Instead, I'm jumping straight into the next What Is video, which I already have plans for, so it might be worth sticking around for. Till next time. All right, just need one. Just one screen. This is fucking stupid. This shouldn't take as much effort as it is. All right. Ah, ah! One long guttural scream coming up. <clears throat>